your own strength, but in the name of Jesus. But anyhow, Eve's having this little chin wag with the devil. And as she's carrying on, the devil looks her in the white of the eye and he said, did God really say that? If you're like me, you've probably said the same thing more than once. Did God really say that? And I thought to myself, I could probably spend the next year answering that question. So here we go. Lesson number one. Did God really say that? And so my focus for the next couple of weeks, maybe longer, you know me, um, my focus is going to be how God trains us. How God trains us. Sometimes we get this attitude, this idea, why is the Christian life such a challenge? Why is, why is my life so, so fraught with ups and downs? Why, why can't I just, you know, get in smooth sailing? Why can't I just always be on the mountaintop? Why can't I just always be in victory? Why can't I just always be happy? Why can't I this? Why can't I that? And you've got to understand that God is in the process of training you. And whether or not you signed up, God signed you up and He enrolled you in the school of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say school of the Holy Spirit. And the good news is there's never a drop out in the school of the Holy Spirit. He'll just take you around the mountain one more time. And if you, you know, bum out and you don't pass the grade, he'll take you around that same mountain another time. Prove the point, just go back and read the Old Testament. The children of Israel learned the same lesson 40 times. Around that mountain, 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 mountain. 40 years later, finally somebody said, Aha, uh -huh, I finally get it. And they marched across the Jordan. They could have marched across the Jordan in year number one. But they were so daft, so hard-headed, so full of Egypt, that it took God, in the school of the Holy Spirit, 40 years teaching them the same lesson. You might be 40 years old in God, and still in kindergarten in year number one. But God's not going to kick you out of the school. Hallelujah. And in actuality, He won't even let you drop out. He'll come and drag you kicking and screaming back into class. And it's that dragging you back into class is where so many of us get frustrated and we start to complain and matter and say, I never signed up for this. I'll tell you, there's lots of things I didn't sign up for. And my mama never told me that there would be certain things happening in my life. But lo and behold, they happen. And they come in like a flood and all of a sudden, ready or not, here they come. And you and I have to make up our minds whether or not we're going to yield to the Holy Spirit and the great teacher. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our teacher, John chapter 14. He's our teacher. And so he's, he's the hound of heaven that is standing in front of your classroom day and night. And he's teaching you, teaching you, teaching you. His goal, his business is to train you to become godlike. His goal in his business is to conform you into the very image of Jesus Christ. And that's a big job. That's a big job because none of us are naturally like Jesus. I'm sorry to inform you of that, George, but none of us are like Jesus. We come in dirty, rotten sinners. We come in the scum of the earth, the off-scouring, as the Bible says. We come in wretched, blind, and alone. We come in outside the covenants of God. We come in outside the promises of God. But He lets us to come in. He encourages us to come in. Just as we are. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. God invites you to come. Baggage, warts and all. And then He says, Now that you've come. Now that you've taken out your heavenly citizenship. I get so excited when I see you taking out your Canadian citizenship because it's that much easier to relate to the fact that God brought you out of the kingdom of Satan and He translated you, He transferred you, He brought you into the kingdom of His own Son, the kingdom of light. And now you take a loyalty oath, a, a swear allegiance to the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible says that you are now a citizen of heaven. But just because you're a citizen of heaven doesn't mean that you understand, understand everything about heaven. Doesn't mean that you understand 
everything, all the laws and, and all the culture and, and everything else. It means that you've now said, this is where I belong. This is where I want to be. This is who I want to be.